Welcome, I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. A little later in the program, a look at the new media. Is the media really covering local issues the way it should? But first, a wonderful fight coming up in Westminster, forcing landlords to give registration forms so their tenants can vote. What a great idea, of course. Common Cause must love it. So Elena Nunez from Common Cause is here. Glad to have you here. Good to be here. But to have the Apartment Association represented, it's so good to have you here, Stephanie Avery. Thank you. All right, so you're, you're thrilled by this. All right, let's, let's talk about what this is. Now, uh, this popped up, and it was the, the mayor to, uh, pro tem there who suggested a new, brand new thing, and saying that landlords now would be forced to deliver pieces of paper to their tenants in hopes that they would register. Do I have that basically right? More or less. The policy's changed over time, so we're now not talking about a voter registration form. It's now information about how to register to vote. But yes, all landlords would include that in the packet of information that they give tenants when they sign their lease and give them their other information. What other information? The lead paint disclosure, the rules lead for the... Lead paint disclosure? Now, you yeah. might not know this. I actually, my one and only investment that's worked out, I have the little house that I bought 20-some years ago, and I rent it out. Uh, and so there's a lead paint disclosure I'm supposed to give them? My understanding, and I don't mm, know... I don't remember that. Well, I, I, I can't tell you, but I do know that members of city council have said that there's a packet of information, and Stephanie perhaps can tell us more about it, but lead paint, rules for the pool, that sort of thing. <laughs> rules for the pool? Yeah, if there's, an apart if there's a pool right. in the apartments, I don't think it's just pools in general. Right, uh, but there's all sorts of information that sense. tenants get. This would uh, be one see, of those. It's good to have fully informed tenants, and it's your job as as a landlord to make sure they're fully informed, not just about the property, but about the world around them, right? Hmm. Well, that is an interesting question. Um, our belief is that we're there as customer service reps, and we make sure that our residents are well taken care of, and that it's about our industry and our business. Um, as far as making sure that they are aware of everything in the city, because of fair housing laws, our hands get a little bit tied. We, we have to be careful in how we communicate with our residents. Um, and we also, we do have to... Hey, all we're asking you <laughs> is to put one more piece of paper in there so right. that your people can vote more easily. That sounds so very reasonable. Um, and I can see how someone would see it that way who's not in our industry or in an industry that has to do with private business and being in the private sector. Our concern is that to us it's not just one piece of paper. To us it's overstepping from the government in now having a role that they have put into private industry. They're not supporting us as far as ad administrative costs that are associated, associated with it. And I understand people are going to go back to that one point of, but it's just one piece of paper. It's also our timing. And we feel that once this starts happening, and yes, it's right now it's in Westminster, where does that stop? You're much too polite. Let me, let me, let me try this on your behalf. What, are you freaking crazy? <laughs> this is not reasonable. This is a private relationship between two individuals, a landlord and a tenant. And while there might be some things that we give a tenant about uh, the rules in the lease, uh, we don't, we're, why should we be compelled to do, to do this work to help them vote? What, what is that special relationship that makes this unfunded mandate on me a good thing? Well, I think it's a couple of things. One, the city of Westminster has decided as part of their strategic plan that they want to encourage civic engagement. So part of then that... Then why don't they do it? Well, that's part of the plan as well, to in, have the same information available when you turn on your utilities, when you sign up for water, et cetera. So whether you're a renter or an owner, you have that same access. But if that's an important value, they're also saying to the people who are doing business in the city, we want you to include this as part of the tenant packet. And that would be the requirement. And that is a common sense, simple way to encourage voter registration. No, it's a rather Stalinistic way to do it. Let's, let's try it this way. Um, it's one thing for the city to require that I be licensed to rent my place, that it's safe got it. But 
this, this relationship saying you must provide what you think is important because you've got a special interest that pushes it or that the mayor pro tem there, Faith Winner, thinks this is a great idea and of course she's running for the legislature so it might help her name ID. Really what you're doing is, is forcing private individuals to do somebody's political work as a matter of law. Let me do it another way. There are all sorts of things you can register for in government. Uh, a concealed carry permit is a great one. Now, I'm a member of the NRA. I'd be happy to have enough pressure put on uh, Westminster, we could run an initiative, to do exactly the same thing so that uh, this lady has to provide an application or information on how to apply to a, for a concealed carry permit in Westminster. You would have to support that as well, wouldn't you? That's not part of the strategic plan. If it were for Westminster and they decided it was important, that'd be a fine conversation to Wait, have. I'm talking but about as an you, organization, you would support this, wouldn't no, you? No, as Common Cause, an organization that works to increase participation in the political process. What's the difference in the principle, though? The principle is about encouraging civic participation. So, and, is, so is carrying a, a concealed weapon that for a lot of people who are going to... How does that encourage participation? Those would say it makes a safer society, it gets people more involved, in the same way that you can sure, make those Well, that things. is a fair debate to have, and if the Westminster City Council wanted to have it, I'm sure a whole other set of interests would come out to have that debate. So but if, in if the, the City Council, if the City Council deems it appropriate to force private businesses and private owners to do their will, then that's that appropriate? happens all the time. I mean, the fact that a private interest has to shovel their walk or keep their property safe, or in this instance, it would be provide voter registration information, those are all decisions that can be made by the government about how to create a better and more inclusive society. And in the strategic plan, again, if you go back and look, civic engagement is one of the things that they deem important. So it's not hard to see then, if you know that civic engagement is important, voter registration is a key part of that. Under that logic, and then I'm going to bring it right over here, under that logic, make it very clear that somebody like me could help and organize a uh, initiative there. Remember, this is the same area that kicked out Evie Hudak for, uh, for her position on guns. There will be a lot of people who would like to see the city do something, giving information about the NRA or other shooting groups. And if that's part of the process, it is a principled use that whoever has the majority can force government to force well, individuals. I think there's a slight disconnect between the example you're offering and what's being proposed here. Why? Because you're not, the city council's not saying we would like you to join this organization or that organization to, so that you can register to vote. Yes, They're you say, want to join the group of voters. Is it that difficult to yes. vote? Well, to, to register two to vote? things. One, again, the NRA is not the same as being a registered voter. So to say you should join a third party interest versus you should concealed, register to vote, those are different. Concealed weapon permit. That, government, would be, government. that would be parallel. And if that right, were the let's case, go with that. and they, again, it made sense with the strategic plan and that's what they wanted to do, power to them. All right, that's so the planners, fine. if the planners think it's a good idea, if it's part of the central plan, then well, this just central helps. Central plan, we're talking about the vision for the community, which could include concealed carry. No, no, this I have is, no this idea. is the government yeah. planners and the government plan and the city council decided this is where we want to go. And for you to do business here, it's not that big of a deal. You're doing all this other stuff. You give them a registration form so that they can well, vote. One of the things that I thought was really interesting in being at the Westminster, Westminster City Council on Monday was that there was a lot of talk about A, DMV, uh, B, Postal Service. And so one of the, th and those are government entities, right? Mm -hmm. So as far as Welfare registering, offices. registering to vote, there's a box that you check. And if you go about getting a driver's license, which you have to do, and or usually you have to have a photo ID, uh, most of them are driver's licenses, and someone would have to present that in order to go and get a, an apartment tour at most facilities. But you're also talking about individual owners who are going to be renting out their places and they can be fined up to a thousand dollars. By the way, that's me. You work for a large organization. Right. So I'm going to be trained. I'm just trained, one of trained. the many, many people in Colorado that uh, have a one place that they that they rent out. Right. And so, as far as you know, one of the jobs would be to make sure that every single person is educated on something that we see is very unfair. But what are they going to do to do that? Um, and they can impose a hefty fine. And I know I have a, a property that I rent out. And if I weren't in the apartment industry, 
I would, it would be very difficult to know why about would, things like this. Why would it be difficult? Hold on a second, because it's not quite right to say that every landlord in the city would be required to do this. We're only talking about those who are registered with the city. So the small mom and pop who wouldn't otherwise be registered, they're not subject to this. Now, we could debate whether or not they should be, but, but there is a distinction. Oh, those gonna... who are already interacting with the city and who are already subject to the city's regulations, this is one more that will be part of that process. Now, talk to me about the principle of any government organization requiring a private individual to to perform an act that is not part of their normal business that you can talk about shoveling sidewalks but those are public access you can talk about all sorts of things uh, like having uh, fire alarms and carbon monoxide detectors we understand that's for the safety of the people here the immediate safety of those folks there that's why we have building inspectors I get all that this however is different because some people, like you, want to make voting easy and, ob uh, and ubiquitous. What about the idea of forcing people to do these things? I think this is a terrible idea. And if I want to give people registration forms, there's nothing that bars me from doing so. Why not convince people like this to do this? Why use the forceful power of government to compel them? Well, that's how you make sure that it happens. To say, well, it'd be nice if you had this form, some would do it, some wouldn't. And then voters are, and citizens are not getting the same access. If you say, we want every access. land yes, to the form. So you say, we want every landlord in this community to do this and include it as part of the regulatory process, as part of the training. You give that information out. Then you know if you rent from landlord A or landlord B, they're both going to have access, and that is... But they're not the ones that grant access. If I'm moving someplace, not only can I get it at the DMV or the library or the post office or the welfare office, I can simply go online and register online. Right, it's, which is we, probably, admit, when we talk about the form, thing. that's probably what the form is going to say, right? You can get a form at any of these places. You can go online to govotecolorado.com. Yes, it's about giving that information, because what we see is that when people move, their first thought is about getting their utilities turned on, getting the cable hooked up. It's not about changing their voter registration. It, what about property maybe owners? Maybe for you and I it is, what, but not for why, most people. Why so. tenants and not other people? Why not uh, force something to make sure that property owners understand and that they get registered? Right, well, is that's it, now is it, happening is it, by, be, is it Could it be that this is more of a political group that's worth targeting right. apartment dwellers? Right. Well, two things. One, that council had significant conversation about expanding it for when people turn on water and utilities, which also applies to property owners. Two, for all of the conversation about certain voters being impacted more than others, there's no evidence that suggests that voters who are tenants versus landowners are likely to vote one way or another. We saw the same arguments about motor voters, same arguments about same-day registration, same arguments about vote by mail, but there's no reason all to suggest... All of which are government operations, sure, not private operations. Sure, but if you're talking about operations. trying to influence the outcome of the election, this is just about increasing opportunities for, for people to participate. It's not about trying to what's, affect what's, an outcome. What's the real cost here? What's, we've got about a minute left. What, what's the real danger that you're worried about? Where's what? the end in this? This is mean? private industry. This is government coming in and wanting us to start with a government function that they could do through the libraries, through the DMV. It's We already have House Bill 13-1303, which allows same-day voter registration. You can go in and immediately re register to vote and vote. And so in this, it's a bit of an overstep and a little bit of a condescension as far as people who are renters, that they would not know how to find this information. Make it easier on the DMV, in the DMV, make it easier in, in things that are connected to government and leave private industry out of this. The next step that I see is that they're going to have property managers and leasing agents who will end up getting sued by the residents and that they didn't get their voter registration. This That's all going to come back on in us. A, in a trial-happy society, this is one more unfunded mandate, another box that could be used to say, voter suppression, my landlord never told me I could vote here. Right, you got it. And that'll go right against fair housing, and that's it's it's a terrible place for us to be in. And we weren't brought to the table to discuss how this would impact our industry. You're talking about people who don't have enough knowledge about our industry demanding this. And the idea of liberty, and let me wrap it up here, and the idea of liberty, that we live in a free country, that people shouldn't be forced by their government, coerced, uh, shouldn't be slaves, should not be doing things for the benefit of other, other people, 
tell me how this, by principle, is, is, is a good principle. And if it goes to, you know, will, will Common Cause be as supportive when I put something on the ballot there to, uh, to get concealed carry permit applications put in that same package? This is about expanding opportunities for voters to register to vote. And that is fundamental to a functioning society. It's why it's in the strategic plan. It's why the city of Westminster is moving forward. So absolutely, that's important, and that's why we support this measure. I don't see how you advancing concealed carry, that may be a policy that makes sense. You can't see it. But that does not. I can't see how this does what yours. And yet again, we disagree. Yes, <laughs> All but the is right is, in the world. But well, here's the difference. When I disagree, with you, I'm not suggesting that the power of government coerce people to work on political causes that I like. Allowing Your cause every does. voter the opportunity to vote is not a political cause. And we who are doesn't, allowed. Who doesn't have the right to vote? This is about who expanding Who in Colorado doesn't have the right to vote? I don't even know how you want me to respond. Does anyone not have the right to vote here? Who's not, you mean who's eligible? Yes. Absolutely, they can is register in any number of ways. Is it difficult to register to vote here? There are many ways to register, I asked some you of which question. are easier is it than difficult? others. Is it difficult to register to vote? Sometimes here? it is. And what I is that difficulty? There are dramatically different ways that motor vehicles implement the motor voter law, which Common Cause supported. That still needs work. Same day registration. With a straight face, yes. you're going to say it's Absolutely. difficult to register to vote. All I right. think there's still a lot of work to do to increase participation in our elections. I think voter turnout shows that. Yes, and I have a feeling that your political cause is gained by this, and coercing government to do your dirty work is pretty ugly. The numbers don't support what you're saying, and we're about everyone having the opportunity to register. Uh, period. Last thought over here. I'm sorry to okay, cut well, you off. Okay, um, well, since you're saying that, I mean, part of what we're concerned about is that they're part of the strategic planning that you're talking about um, nationally has to do with um, letting people vote that are not citizens and also decreasing the age of voters. So there's a lot that we're seeing from websites that I think we all know what the this. game is. Got to yeah. run. Stay tuned. You're going to love this.